Hello, insiders. Newsflash. First of all, our friend Matt Colvall tweeted a reminder about the studio migration. Check the link below. It's a great video. He has way higher production quality than Creator Insider. And follow him on Twitter at YouTube Liaison. Uh, he's going to be part of uh, our efforts to communicate more with creators. Second, we are launching some new and improved features in Studio within the live control room. These include features like the ability to make highlights off um, of unprocessed streams and to start stop a stream via an encoder. Uh, we know that during the YouTube Studio beta days, there was a lot of challenges with that new live control room. So hopefully some of the improvements you're gonna to see to the live control room address many of your concerns and know that there's more improvements coming to live control room. Next, we are at the 10% rollout stage of click-through rate in the YouTube Studio snapshot report. A lot of creators have been asking for that click-through rate data in the snapshot report uh, in addition to where it currently lives uh, in YouTube Analytics. So now you can see it on the snapshot right on your dashboard. And if you hover over it, you actually get some insights about how the CTR on this video is performing. Because remember, high CTR isn't always a good thing because as your video gets promoted more, um, the CTR will naturally go down. So when you hover over, we have some kind of intelligent insights that adjust for that factor. And lastly, as a reminder, when it comes to click-through rate, be careful about not going all the way into clickbait territory. So if your thumbnail and title are sensational, and then people click on it, but then they get something very different, that is a, a big no-no, and it will hurt the promotion of that video, and it could even hurt your channel. Next, uh, we recently talked to Luke about that kind of cool idea of when is your audience online data. That is now in a very early development, but rolling out in an experiment to around 10% of creators. So if you're in that lucky 10%, take a look at the report. Let us know in the comments below if you found it useful. It basically shows you what day of week and time of day your audience is most active on YouTube overall. Next, another update around YouTube analytics in the YouTube studio. Creators often think of their videos in terms of when they published it. Uh, you know, videos published in February versus March. So it's not natively possible to answer this question easily in YouTube analytics. For example, how did my videos publish in February do? Or how did my videos publish in February do versus those that I publish in March. The default answer is to get all the views across all videos in June. To answer the question that we just asked, you need to manually create these video groups within Deep Dive. So as one step towards making this a little bit better, we've added a filter in the advanced mode in that Deep Dive experience in YouTube Analytics for the published date. Um, this should be a great addition for all detailed analysis that are typically not for very recent videos when you wanna compare, you know, like we said, videos published in one month versus another month. So check that out. Of course, in the long run, we wanna make that filter available throughout YTA, throughout YouTube Analytics. But uh, for now, it's, it's first in that advanced mode and uh, hopefully you find it useful. Next, our friends in the membership team have made a new video on how to make the most of your channel memberships, and it is now available in the memberships. And it's now available in the memberships playlist below. Next, today, you probably don't know this because this is only affects a tiny slither of creators, but if you don't customize your channel page, you get the default channel homepage. There is one style that most people don't know about, when you have less than 100 subscribers, which is this shelf-based design that shows three default shells, uploads, playlists, and subscriptions if you make them public. And then there's another style when you have more than 100 subs, which shows a vertical list of your latest videos. We're gonna converge to a single default channel homepage uh, which is that shelf-based design. With the shelf-based design, your viewers are gonna get more thumbnails above the fold on the desktop, so that should help your channel grow a little faster. It's also a more consistent design with other parts of YouTube, such as the homepage. Remember, 
This change really only applies to channels that don't customize their homepage. So if you've customized your homepage, this doesn't affect you. Next, there was a lot of interest in the video I did with Jenny a few weeks ago about the UVR program. So I asked her to send over some insights that she and creators were learning through the pilot. And we'll occasionally share them here on Creator Insider. So if this is your first time watching a Creator Insider video, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on this great stuff. But uh, let us know what you think. So of course you should be familiar with the advertiser friendly guidelines, but you should also make sure that you are up to speed with our age restriction guidelines. So age restricted videos are not eligible for monetization or not shown in certain sections of YouTube. So be aware of our age restriction guidelines, link below. So a number of creators have complied with all advertiser friendly guidelines, but they've run into age restrictions, making them ineligible to monetize. For example, a video can be age restricted for fictional violence when it contains like graphic scenes, uh, such as people being uh, dismembered or if they are decapitated in gameplay. Now, while some violence that occurs as part of unedited gameplay can be suitable for ads according to our advertiser guidelines, creators have run into age restrictions for dismemberment in unedited gameplay. For this reason, it's very important to familiarize yourself with age restriction guidelines as age restrictions will lead to demonization. Next, we are adding a destination page on the Explore tab for content from creators participating in YouTube's Stay Home With Me campaign. Uh, this destination will highlight some of our creators who have used video to help people learn, connect, and entertain during this difficult time. We recommend including Stay Home, and then you insert the activity with me in the title, top line description and tags to optimize for discoverability. Consider content that's helpful, fun, informational for the world who is isolated at home, and maybe your video will be highlighted in the new Explore tab destination page. Next, to explore ways to make it easier to find creator stories, we're running a small experiment that lets viewers watch stories by tapping the creator's channel icon below the video on the mobile watch page. In this experiment, we're gonna show a red ring around the channel icon. When there's an active story the viewer has not yet seen from that channel who uploaded the video that they're watching. Viewers can still navigate to the creator's channel page by tapping the channel name on the watch page. So let us know if you've experienced this and what your thoughts are in the comments below. Lastly, uh, Newsflash trivia, two videos ago, the question was if I knew my audience was mostly online on Tuesday mornings at 9 a.m. and I had to do a live stream, is there any reason I wouldn't want to do the live stream on Tuesday at 9 a.m.? The first person to come pretty close was Zazook. Zazook said because they probably want to exhaust new content that other creators have put out first before they watch a live stream. Um, I'll be even more precise. Basically, if most of your audience is online on Tuesday at 9 a.m. and no one else has uploaded new content and no one else is live streaming and no one else is premiering, well, that would be a fantastic time for you to, to do your live stream. But if you take the other example where everyone else is doing a live stream at Tuesday at 9 a.m., even if that's the time when most of your audience is online, it may not necessarily be the best time to do, for you to do a live stream. Or let's say another channel that has a very similar audience to yours is also live streaming at precisely the same time. You know, you may not want to concurrently live stream. It wouldn't be good for you or that other channel. So that's where you may want to think about using that audience online report that's now at the 10% rollout that we just talked about. It's very useful, but it's not ironclad. For this week's trivia here is the question we actually did a launch in youtube studio a very small one around easter and it involves a little bit of a smart sparkling animation so when does that sparkling animation show up in the youtube studio ui 
Uh, if you are the first person to guess correctly, we will give you a shout out in next week's newsflash. Keep it real. See you next time.